What's up guys, it's me Chad and today I have a very special guest with me. You can tell them your name if they don't know you already. I am Chief Colonel Charles. That's right. The Ugebe Afogara. That's right. <laughs> yes guys, so I asked you guys to ask some questions for my grandpa here because... Well, we should explain. Explain it first. That I was confirmed in Nigeria tell him. Uh -huh. by a group of chiefs. Yes. That added me to their rank. Yes. And I obtained the name, the Ugebe Afogara. Say it again. Ugebe Afogara. Ugebe Afogara. Yes, and that is like a city. Like a city. In Bendel State. Oh. So I am part of the chief in that, 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 that state. And uh, after I was pronounced or a robe, the chief, the chief of chiefs, uh -huh. Took me outside and he said, as far as your eyes can look, until the earth touches the cloud, you can occupy as much as that you can. As much as you can. <laughs> yes, guys, so he doesn't call himself cheap That's or fun. Man. Land, land, land in Africa. East, west, north, and south. East, west, north, and south. You look until it touches the cloud. Until it touches the cloud. Yes, guys. So he doesn't call himself chief of fun. He is an official chief of what's the talk? What's the uh, say it again for me? The Ugebe. Ugebe. U G H E G B E. Ugebe. Af Ogara. Af Ogara. Ogara is O G R A. Ogara. Okay. Yes, guys. So I asked you guys to send in some questions. Grandpa said there's no question you guys can send that he cannot answer. So I've got your questions, and he's going to answer them. But can I say a few words to them? Go ahead. You got this. And I'm speaking to your generation. Uh -huh. And I'm saying to you, there are certain guidelines that you must impose on yourself. Mm -hmm. Parents, others, teachers, we want to. But you must examine the world. This is the world of technology. I am glad I'll be 86 in another two weeks. Not even two weeks anymore, less than two. I will be that age, but I'm glad that I've lived to see in this technical development, technology development. Yeah. And I'm asking you to make use of it. Make use of it. Be a disciplined person. Yeah. Man and woman, yeah. not just what your father and mother want you to be. You examine the world, set standards, and stand by them. Uh, that's it. You will make mistake, but mistake is no excuse to turn back. That's true. That's true. My father said, "You will fall, but you are a worthless boy or girl if you don't get yeah. up." Falling is not where you're worthless, is not, not getting, getting up. up. You will fail like many of us do, but it is better to try and fail than fail to try. So if you fail, that's a temporary halt. You go again, you go again until you get over the bump. Your time. Alrighty. So you've got your questions, and you heard what he said. If you fail to try, you already failed. You already failed. It is better to try right. and fail than and fail, fail to, to try. try. I agree. And don't allow your colleagues or your friends or your enemies to laugh at you in such a way that you fail to try. try. I agree. I agree with that, guys. We haven't even gotten into the questions yet. So the first question somebody asked is, what advice would you give to a student going to start university in Jamaica? In Jamaica? Uh -huh. Okay. Jamaica have good universities. Mm -hmm. They teach what you would need to operate, not only in Jamaica, but internationally. 
The problem is the choice of what you make in going into a university. It is cheaper in Jamaica than abroad, whereas some of us who went abroad were able to work our way through university. It is not that easy today. I was able to drive a cab in New York, in Harlem, in Long Island, in Brooklyn, in the Bronx, and sometime across in New Jersey during the night and go to school in the day. It was not easy, but I could not do that in Jamaica. Things have changed. So if you have an opportunity to stay in Jamaica, pick a subject or pick a profession and get it done here. You can live at home and go to school. You can go to school and come home. You can get assistance from parents while you're in school. That's a choice that you have to make based on your personal and own situation. Yep. I agree. How did you keep your kids, so how did you keep your kids motivated to keep striving for excellence in and out of school? Okay. Parents, call them. They are the ones to hear this. You are on many occasions the reason why your child failed. Because you fail to follow them up, you fail to teach them, you fail to assist them. I learned a new one from Pernell Jr. You must talk to your child. You must give them guidelines to do so in love. Don't do some of what I have done. But they got out <laughs> because of the mother. I am fortunate that I married a woman who took charge of the children's development. Mm -hmm. Basic school, foreign language, swimming, extra lessons, extra lessons. drop them and pick them up. She is in charge, was in charge and did a job that I couldn't do. Indeed. So I was the financial assistant. <laughs> but she intellectually, socially and other, she did the job. Mothers, it's tough on you, but it becomes so sweet afterward when all your girls and boys fly out on top of the line. I like that answer. I like that answer. You gave props to grandma too. What are the requirements needed to become a politician? It's easy to become a politician. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to become a successful politician. Mm. It is easy if you are qualified in some social aspect of life. That means where you have contact with the voters. I was fortunate that my profession as a politician, government had a lot of social development training. Mm -hmm. And so I became a trade unionist and had the field of workers mm -hmm. to make sure they get a good pay, they get a good bill of home, they were able to get promotion, they were able to take care of their family, and so they get to like me. Yeah. So you become a politician by getting involved in the life and development of your country and your people. It's not just rich men, but I have a lot of rich men have run against me, and my, I, my workers will take the money and say, I will have some of the money to give a boss, but I'm voting for you. <laughs> the point is, it is your involvement with the voters, the people, what you do for them. Last point, what I, have, I tell you, the question might come, what have I done for people? I am fortunate that from the beginning, children, children were my greatest asset. Mm -hmm. Your child, your children, 
I was known as the ball man. I'm a tennis player, so yes. I always have a tennis ball <laughs> to give out to the crowd. Yes, because every day when we play tennis, yes. any dead balls, grandpa said, grandpa said, bring those three balls. Yes. Put them in. Go and give them to somebody in St. Thomas today. Yes. And so when the children get home, they talk about you. Mm. And when parents are saying bad things about you, they say, no mommy, that man give us ball and he give us books and he came to our school and talk nice things and he tell us what to do. So you get involved with the children, you get involved with parents. So when I send somebody to Canada or to the United States and they work and send money back and the wife build a house, send the children to school, pay the bills, they get to like that. And I have hundreds of Jamaicans who have gone to the United States I don't want to say some haven't come back, but that is true. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell them that. To me. But they took care of their family. They built their home, sent them to school, took care of their children, took care of their wife in particular, and that's all. Oh, and to get that involved, yeah. Yeah, they will see for you to represent them at the parliament. Yeah. Because you did well. Mm -hmm. The next one is, how do you, personally, how do you get over failure and disappointment? Okay, I have had failures, I have had disappointments, but I'm going to tell you the truth, that's not always. I'm an egotist. I don't like you to know that I fail. Me either. So if I'm crying, I don't let you see my tears. Never. <laughs> And before you find out that I failed, I try to correct it. So I get over my disappointment because my father said, any man will fall. Falling is not the problem. If you don't get out and go again, you are walkless. Mm -hmm. I mean worthless. Worthless. For those who are so not Jamaican. I never yeah. allow myself to fall and don't get up. And I teach my children. And this is going to be a little funny. But at eight, at 16, 17, I said to my four girls within that life range, I am not sending you out to have sex. But I'm not an idiot. I will guide you. I will advise you, things will happen. So if you fall, you have not failed unless you fail to get up. Yeah. And that's one of the things that many of our girls have a child at, at 16, 17 and fail to go on. Fail to get up and recover from Fail to go on. Because parents sometimes treat them badly. No, I wouldn't do that. None of my girls have got pregnant in that age, those age. Mm -hmm. But they have other things. Sometimes they get a, a D or a C when they should get an A. And they come home crying and the mother say, wipe your tears, grab your book. Yeah, so let's yeah, go. Let's recover from Next it. Next term, yeah, A. Let's recover from it. So it all depends on the support that you have. And so parents has to know that you are a major part of the development of the child. Don't beat the child. Don't embarrass the child. Don't mm -hmm. run the child. And you must be able to see that something is wrong. Yep. Put your hands around the child. Come and talk to me. Hug her up. Hug him up. He said, look, something is wrong. Daddy, I didn't want to tell you, you know, but go ahead, tell me. And then you say, okay, you don't grab a stick and beat him. You don't say, come out of this, you're good, you're working to this. You now look forward to assisting the child to get up. To and some up. not only get up, they get off. They say, get up and take off that's after that. That's right. I like that answer. I like that answer. What are some techniques we should have in order to be successful in all our life endeavors? Children. No, just overall. Okay. First, you must be disciplined. Discipline. 
And discipline now means having manners to others and not to yourself. You must be disciplined to yourself. Right. What you eat, how you eat, when you eat. Sure. Follow me? Yeah. What you eat, how you eat, when you eat. Yeah. And you don't line, yeah. go out of line where you sleep all day. So, parents will say you must be a disciplined child. I will say yes. The, the, the meaning of discipline means have man as why, have respect girl. You must respect your colleague. If you don't respect that man's sister, how you going to respect yours? Yep. Right. I have put up a lot of fist battles when I was a boy. Anytime I see a boy fighting a girl, I take over the fight. Take over. They take over the fight. <laughs> you cannot. The tray. Some girls are very, very fiercey, mm -hmm. very, very fresh, yeah. very, very out of order. But I've never used my fist to hit a girl. Yeah. Then you call hitting your wife. Yep. And your daughter. And your mother too. Tough. That's so important. these are things that you have to use as guideline to develop. It's not hard. You have to talk to yourself sometimes. Yep. You have to. Just That's get in your room and look in the glass. When you finish your shower, look in the glass and you shave, you know, you're drying yourself. And you say, why? Rough in a fit. I don't feel like going to school today. I don't oh, feel like talking to nobody. And not in the mood, when I'm chatting. Yes. <laughs> and your mother does have to come and put her arm around you and say, Chad, what's wrong? Mommy, yeah. I don't feel like going to school today. So Chad, mommy wants yeah, you well, to go to, go to school. I <laughs> say, all right, mommy, because you want you to go, go and go for you. <laughs> yes, I don't mind going for her. Because you are going mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So, you must learn to discipline yourself. You must also look at the discipline from your parents and you must share it with your colleague. Yeah. And you must know what is right from wrong. In other words, when Pernell Jr. was 10 or 11, he went to high school. It was very bright. I called them and I sit, sat them down and I said, now let me tell you some of the pitfalls that you're going to have in high school. Bernard, you are what, 11, 12? When school gives a break, you'd see a group of guys gather around the tank behind the school. You will see them lighting a spiff. They'll pass it to you and say, take a draw. No, no. And they'll say to you, you're soft. Tell them you prefer to be soft now because you're here to get tough. All he, right. said, he said to me, Daddy, you should have told me that last year. <laughs> That's a good one. I mean, he was That's a good one. They got it already. That's a good one. All right. How did you feel when your kids joined politics? Well, my kids were exposed to politics because I always share with them. Whatever programs I have with children out in the field on health day or on children's day, they're the ones who carry out. They serve the books, they serve food, they talk to the children. Yeah. So they, they got a feeling from a lot of what their father was doing for children. And the parent of a master's in law from George Washington University. Mm -hmm. He has uh, successfully um, passed exams for three states. I think is New York, Florida, and California. What money he could stay in his office and make in one week. Can make it to Jamaica in five years. But he said, put a hole on that. I want to follow my father's footsteps, help others to develop while I... Of course you have to help yourself. Don't mm -hmm. you get the feeling yeah. that I mean you must come and starve and walk yeah. barefoot. You know what I mean? Michelle, she was Siaga's favorite. Siaga told her, get a profession, have your children, get a, have your job, and you can and she did just that. And when she came back, 
She was ready to take her. Ready home. to do it. One of these days we'll discuss how how strong she is. <laughs> yes. What is your advice for a teen who knows what she wants to do with her life? but so sees no way how to get there and has doubts okay number one if you know what you want to do in life mm -hmm. you have succeeded that's the first step to really succeeding for it. what you need now is support yeah. for that succession or let us put it this way you know what you want to be you are succeeding in knowing what you want to do so you are you need support to proceed to be successful Right, so know what you want to be, follow the guidelines that are set out nationally and internationally. Yeah. Don't just say you want to be a, um, a dressmaker, but you can't make a dress. Yeah. Uh, follow me? Mm -hmm. I really don't want to learn to make a dress. Yeah. You want to be a doctor? Right, there are four girls, three of them are doctors. Mm -hmm. And from there were small. The mother keep putting to them, oh, doctors help the world, and doctors help people, and doctors guide, and so they get a feeling that they want to be doctors. To help, yeah. They get them for the purpose of it, yes, not and just... Parents have a lot to do. Some parents are lacking in guiding their children. I give you this one. I know a new lady in Port Morant when I was a member of Parliament. She did not, my father said, she did not know A from Bullfoot. She could not read. Mm -hmm. But she had twin girls. Uh -huh. and every night, sit on the step with a bottle lamp. Yes, sir. The kerosene lamp? Yes, sir. No, no. It's an ordinary um, drink bottle. Bottle? Crap, crap, crap. Well, not, not a plastic one. The glass one? The glass one. Uh -huh. She put half cursing oil in the bottom. Uh -huh. She rolled up some newspaper, tight and cock it, uh -huh. and hold the oil down, let it soak in the, 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 the paper. Uh -huh. She light it and spray it. Right. It's called battle lamp. Battle lamp. And she sit on that step with her two girls. And she said, remember she can't read it? Yeah. She said, you read now. I mean, she read, you read now. And if she call a word, she goes, uh-uh, you go over that word. She, know she knows song, then, yes. Right? And her two girls turned out to be professionals. Wow. Though she could not read. Mm -hmm. So she guide them, work with them. And that's what parents need to do, a major part of that. Don't tell me how the boy face it. Don't tell me how the girl has no manners. Talk about yourself. That's true. If you want your child face it, yep. if you want your child to have no manners, because yep. you ball at them, you push them, you don't sit them down and ask them to do it for you. Yeah. They, they, they work for their mother and uh -huh. the parents and make the parents proud. Uh -huh. That's good. All righty. The next one is, how do you handle the negativities that come with being a politician? It seems like you're getting a lot of political questions, but I saw some, I saw some different genre questions later on. So how do you deal with the negativities that come with being a politician? Okay, first thing, I know that there are negatives. And not all that you think is negative is negative. Okay. Some are true. People will read you. People will see in you certain things. And you have to be able to bounce them off. Some of the things they say about me, I couldn't say on this. Yeah. Okay? I know it's not true. Yeah. For example, you know that I have never lit a cigarette in my mouth never. and put this smoke into in my piano. stomach. Yep. Or a ganja that put it into my brain. That could not happen. And everybody say I'm a ganja man. Yep. So, a uh, lot of people said that. So you, 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 you must know the truth the about truth yourself. yourself. 
People say things about you that you know is not true, but they bounce it off. Move on. I get a lot of stuff said about me since I started doing YouTube. Yes, that yes, are, yes. You just have to bounce them off. And people say things about you to promote themselves. Remember, people say negative about you to promote themselves. Now, when you succumb to their negative, you support them, they win. Yep, especially when you get upset. When you get upset, they win. It's difficult to get me upset. Yeah. I walk away. What would you say is your biggest day-to-day -day challenge? Day-to-day? -day? Well, I think like now uh -huh. or previously. Hmm. Answer both. What's your biggest day-to-day -day challenge now and what was it previously? Well, I'm retired, they say. <laughs> they say. It makes me tired uh -huh. because I have to sit and something. And be like relaxed. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and you know I play tennis yep. from, I get up from 5 o'clock until 7.15. Eat something, go to tennis, play, take exercise. Um, my greatest challenge now is keep looking. I read very much. Mm -hmm. I am, I'm putting together my last book. Book. Yes. By the fifth book, which is outlining a lot of things that I need help for because I, I can't do all the research. Yeah. But I think the challenge is how to survive on the rest of what your body will offer you. Yes. Like the coconut tree, the leaves will fall and fall until only the heart is left. And the heart is there long enough, it bends and come down and then it starts to run from the top, come down. down. Yeah. That's the challenge. Recognize that you're going to reach there one day. Yep, that's true. That's true. Ooh, that was a good answer. Which world culture is most fascinating to you? World culture? Which world culture is most fascinating to you? Well, what do you think they mean by that? Um, what is a culture? You have language culture. I think they would just mean it probably on a whole. Which one is just the most fascinating to you? Well, I don't know that I would have one. Was it game or what? Uh, they, well, they just said which world culture, so I'm not sure exactly well, what they meant. Because, you see, there's social development. Mm -hmm. The Chinese have certain culture. Mm -hmm. The Africans have certain culture. Yep. We have certain culture. That's true. So I am international, right? I like a little of everything. Everything. Follow me? I know to guide myself. Because when I'm in Africa, there's certain foods that I eat I don't get in Jamaica. Yep. When I'm, in, when I'm at my home, there's certain foods that I eat. eat that you won't eat anywhere uh, else as well. But yes. a certain culture is a little of everybody. A, a big melting pot of culture yeah, is your yeah, perfect yeah, cup of tea. Yeah, well, yes, yes. I have some tea, have some chocolate, uh, some water sometimes. Some water sometimes. <laughs> so you just like a little bit of everything. Yes, yes. That's a good answer too. Where do you see yourself in one year? One year from now, where do you see yourself? Well, uh, it's difficult to predict. Because... And I'm glad you asked that question. We are now passing through a pandemic yeah. that you don't know What's gonna happen? when it will catch you. Exactly so. so, if you weren't born in Jamaica, so I don't think you have. I got it. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they are giving vaccination. Yeah. And you have some wise guys coming to tell you rubbish About that America. that vaccination is going to turn steel in your body and cause you to die. Every one of us have this 
Every one of us, if you're born in the Caribbean, you have this mark right here. And mine is there. Mine is even bigger yep. than yours. Yeah. Drew's only bigger too because the mom said she moved. Well, let me tell you. When I was a boy, mm -hmm. I could not go through the school door unless I had my vaccination vaccine. and certificate. Yep. Still, with my college, I still have a certain amount of so, vaccines. If you had to get a certificate to go in, why? Because why did you, why were you vaccinated? Necessary. Against certain, certain. countries. Yep. Atmospheric difficulties, disease, yep. this and that. Nice. So we have some new things that come on. And I have to get vaccine again. I got about three or four vaccines. So fever. Women had to get one that they're gonna have children. They have it because if you have a child without it, child might come without a hand. I'll come without something that's not exactly. normal. Yeah. So child, listen to this now. Internationally, the World Health Organization, the United Nations, the top universities have produced men and women that analyze all of these things yeah. and guide us as to what to do to live longer. Yep. Now, when a man who can't read is out there telling me that if you make them in Jackie, you're going to die. I will tell you, if you don't get the injection that gives you the ability to fight off when it comes, yeah. you have a problem. You do? You really do? Right? So may I say to all nice. my colleagues, friends and enemies, Ask yourself, what the hell is this on your thing? And you will recall that before you were able to say no, you had to yeah, take this vaccine to go to school. Yep. No, I'm saying to you, you have to take the vaccine to live. Yep. The it's hospitals not, not are overflowing. Of, not a matter of school. More anymore. people are dying every day. This thing is going in a way that it might turn out to what was called no on the ark. That when the world is Don't finished, only who was in the ark safe? Yep. Well, you're gonna have a problem. Yep. Take your vaccine. Take your vaccine. If you love me, if you believe me, I hear somebody saying, I don't love you. Well, I don't mind about <laughs> that. I guess I don't believe you either, but I don't mind about don't that. Mind about I'm that. only advising you. Do not wait until somebody give you. The virus. That virus, yep. and you have to go to the hospital where there's no room. No room. Whereas if you took the vaccine, when they give it to you, you'll fight it off. Yep. And you won't have to go to any hospital. Yeah. What's the biggest lesson life has taught you so far? The biggest lesson? The biggest lesson life has taught you so far. Well, that's a compound question. I have to give you a compound answer. We're ready for it. How to face the world. Ooh. How to face the world. How to live. How to manage yes, your, your life. How to help others. How to get an education. How to get that so you can feed yourself. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Establish a family. Take care of them. All of that comes out of living. It's a combination, a compound situation, but you have to do it in order to end up with one thing, live. Certain situations can only be taught by living through them. I can see that. Nobody thought that I would be what I am. Mm -hmm. Not even the best um, guesser. <laughs> Not even the, the psychics. But to be honest, I don't know that I knew. Uh -huh that I could be, could have achieved yeah. what I have achieved. But I know one thing, I need to stay a country. Yep. I <laughs> need to continue to walk barefoot. Barefoot. I need to continue to just eat jackfruit. Yep. 
And when the teacher comes, I want to be like the teacher. When the doctor comes, and when the man comes to pull out the rotten teeth, the strands, I like pull out teeth. You wanted to be a dentist, didn't yes. you? Yes. I <laughs> went to New York University in Spain. Yes. Nearly two years as a medical, as a, what? Doing your medical degree? Yes, uh, pre-med. Pre-med. Until I discovered, I didn't know enough in chemistry. <laughs> same, same here. Same here. That's what happened to me in third form. So, somebody said, several rows before you, they all lead to success. Yep. Choose this one. one is an outside road. Take the next Take one. Take the next one. They go to success, provided you walk on them. Yeah. And so I switched from the pre-med into a social science degree and become a trade unionist and politician with a degree in government. From one of the best universities. Yes, of course. NYU, it's a big school. No, CCNY. I went to New York University, NYU, for uh -huh. two years. For two years. And I moved to City College, the City University uh -huh. of New York. This was much cheaper. Much cheaper. I went to community college too for two years. <laughs> <laughs> I went to community college too, trust me. Hmm, let's see. If there were 28 hours in every day instead of 24, what would you do more of? Well, I have said for the past many years, mm -hmm. I don't know who established, and this is where I defy doctors. My son and my wife, who is a senior nurse practitioner, yeah. and my daughters were doctors. That you, you need eight hours sleep, mm -hmm. even if you're not working. If you are working and tired, tired. you then need, you need that eight hours hours. sleep. But not doing anything and still need eight hours. <laughs> You're wasting time. You're wasting sleeping. time. Yep, that's true. And sleep will take if you lie down. What? So I am an avid reader. And I write, I make notes, and I make um, no doubt about it. I prepare myself for the future. Remember. Let's go back to the beginning. I didn't have an opportunity to go to basic school. Yep. There were no basic school in my, my community. Mm -hmm. It was dependent on my mother to teach me A, B, C. C. Teach me to spell rat, cat, cat and bat. bat. <laughs> and count to a hundred. Yes. Right? So when I went to school, there were boys and girls who had a background of learning to write and read. Reading and they went to basic, basic school. school. And I stay with them, learn from them, copy from them. Copy from them, of course, <laughs> of course. And I'm helping somehow. Mm -hmm. I thank God that I made it, passed my exams, got my degrees, returned, got a job, and work, as you know, the question is coming up, so I tell you, two terms in the KCAC. Uh -huh. this, this question is actually coming up, so just say it from now. Okay. No, no, you can say it from now, tell them. Two terms in the KCAC two terms as, a in the case, as a counselor. Two terms in the Senate in the upper house, Okay. as a member of the Senate. Uh -huh. Three terms as a member of parliament in Senate. Thomas. St. Thomas and four terms as member of parliament in Clarendon. In Clarendon, so that's seven terms in the upper house. Uh -huh. I was appointed four terms as minister, minister of local government, uh -huh. minister of public utilities and transport two times, uh -huh. minister of labor and social security, and finished as Speaker of the House. You were never Minister of Transportation? Yes, Public Utilities. Oh, Public transport. Utilities and Transport. Transportation, they last year about my operation on the buses. <laughs> Mommy has told me stories that you, people were bad driving on the road and you've pulled them over. 
Well, let me give you this one. Tell them. At the bottom of Red Hood, uh -huh. you have one, two, three, four, five, six roads meet. Six roads? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, it is six. And there's no light. So, in the evenings, you find one mile of road of traffic back to Washington Boulevard, one back to Redis, one back to Perkins Boulevard. And there's no lights. No lights. So, I pull over. Pull over. Get back in the road. I say, you stop, you, you come. come. You stop. <laughs> and, you stop I go. and the people, they clap. And they they stop. Stop. But and, Grandpa. And everybody go home. You're making this sound like this was a long time thing. No, no, no. You were caught doing this. Just the other day. Last again, month. Again. You were caught doing this last month. Again. <laughs> because when you see hundreds of cars. Yep. And the police. Just one police could make a difference. Yep, that's true. One person from the National Work Agency. Could make a difference. One light. Could one stoplight. That's true. And I called up the police. And I spoke to a decent police. And he said, Mr. Charles, I'm going to solve the problem. Going to solve the problem. And when you get there now, you see a police car flashing its light, mm -hmm. which create discipline. Yep. It just, it just mentally, just it's a, just like, just all right, light as it's let me not break people the law. People just, yep. people just say, you go, I come. And more people get a chance to go home faster with the police. Not being there, everybody, the gets, police everybody gets to go everybody home. Everybody behaves. Other than that, until somebody hits yep. and you spend three hours. Yeah, that's true. Right? So, the question was, <laughs> I don't even remember it. What do you want your legacy to be? You know, Chad, it's difficult to have any legacy that you can report in. Okay. I sat down and count, and there are 18 of you. 18 grandchildren? 18 grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Uh, four or five great grandchildren, and there are seven children. The legacy I want is that you always remember that if it weren't for the people, I wouldn't be what I am. That's true. You must help the people. And you must be professional in it. You must get a profession where you can extend your help to building your country so that you can help people. I was driving down Oxford Road to Crawford Tree, and there's a mm -hmm. man there in a stick. Then up. Coming up, and he come up to me, I put down my window. And he looked at me and said, but beg me something. I looked at him and said, but that man can't work, how oh, is he even walking? Yeah. I took out a hundred or five hundred dollars and gave it to him. He looked at me and said, thank you, Mr. Pernell Charles. I couldn't drive off. <laughs> the man knows Not me. anymore. Can't drive off anymore. Suppose I had driven off I and Suppose he had said no. Man. Yeah. He knows exactly who you are. So I want to say, I think you should prepare yourself for this technology, technological age. Yeah. And we have to live for one another. Mm -hmm. We have to help relatives and friends and even enemies. Many people who could not believe that I would talk to them. And I said, man, I am an egotist. Michael Mandy said, put me in prison mm -hmm. for one year. Yeah. Michael Manley told some workers that they should, if they don't get rid of me, they're not going to get any work. Now, he didn't tell them to come and kill me. 
but they have interpretation. Yeah. One man hit me in the eye, broke his bone, mashed up the glass in my eye uh, to shoot him. I didn't shoot him in his chest, shot him in the leg. Mm -hmm. When Michael Manley, who incidentally, and this is a story I want to tell you, yeah. Edward Siaga assists me to be what I am. Mm -hmm. I had a problem in deciding and between Siaga and Manley, who do I love more? Mm -hmm. Michael Manley speaks the language of the people as if when he finishes his presentation, is as if he has done it for you. Yep. And I was very attracted to that. I love Michael. And people wonder of all that he has done to me. And when my wife had an accident in America, he refused to allow me to come out of prison if the phone look. Yeah. And when he was about three months from dying, sent for me. Mm -hmm. And the man he said came like say three o'clock. He didn't tell me Michael said. He said, Bernard, you and Michael have had a rough time. He's not doing well. And we think you both should talk. I said, no problem. Mm -hmm. I'll come. He said, what? Do you come? I said, yes. <laughs> so when? I said, no. He said, what? <laughs> and I jumped in the car with yes. him. And I had a fabulous evening with Michael because he was, uh -huh. follow me, uh -huh. was not well. And a little before that, when he was in the hospital, Mr. Shearer called me. I was Minister of Public Utilities and Transport. Mr. Shearer called me and said, I'm coming to see you, Pernod. I said, Prime Minister, he was Deputy Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. The Deputy Prime Minister said, don't come to see ministers. Minister had come to see Prime Minister. said, you stay there, I'm coming. I said, no, you stay there, I'm coming. <laughs> and I get up and go. And you got up and went. And he said, when I went in, he said, boy, I want to tell you something, I might tell you again. I said, come on, Mr. Sheridan. He said, well, Michael is very sick. And one of the things that makes him so sick, he has a flower farm in the Blue Mountain. Mm -hmm. And because of the heat, the sun, yeah. they're dying. dying now. They need a little water. And I wanted to ask you if you could give him a little water. I said, Mr. Sherry, you have the telephone, you call me for that. <laughs> Pick up the telephone and I call my friend and former mayor of Mandeville, who was chairman of the board of the Water Commission. Mm -hmm. I said, so, I wanted to send two truckloads of water up to the Blue Mountain for Michael Manley Farm. He said, who are you say? <laughs> Who? I said, Mr. Michael Manley. He said, hold on, let me go in my office and talk to you. <laughs> let me lock the door. I can't make nobody hear this, hold on. And he came in the <laughs> office. He went to the office, he said, Minister, what you say a while ago? I said, I would like you to send two truckloads of water to the Blue Mountain. Get the person up there to sign a document receiving the water, two copies, one for you, you one, one for me. He, he took a deep breath and said, well, boss, if I use so so. Is that <sighs> you say so. Is that right? Use yeah. so so, is that right? Yeah. He sent the water. I got this form and I gave it to Shira. And he was pleased and I'm sure he gave it to me. So when I went to see him now, back to, I went to see Michael, with him encourage him because he wasn't well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we love and we chat. That's good. And you know what I remember? What do you remember? About him. Mm -hmm. Michael was Edna's child and Norman Manley's son. Yep. That is class in Jamaica. And he went black. Yeah. But Michael Manley sat with us in the cane field of West Mullen and said to 
he would go to the restaurant. If we eat in sardine and bread, he boss it too. And always look at this guy and say, this guy is a, this guy is a, a different person. Yeah. Siago is no less. Because Siago went to West Kingston when he could have been in St. Andrew. Mm-hmm. He went to the lowest area of life for people. When he could have went to Upper St. Andrew and lived that. One, 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 one toilet, one standpipe, one standpipe. and this the burial go. And he changed it into a Tivoli girl. So these are two guys who competed for my respect and love and association. So Michael left the earth knowing that we said, man, you're all good. You know? That's good. I, I don't know how I would feel. Sorry if I knew that you had gone on. No without the anything. closure, without the closure, you know. Yep, that wouldn't have been a good thing. Mm. What question do we go on to next? Are you more worried about doing things right or doing the right thing? I'm more worried about doing things right because what is right for you don't always have to do right, right for me. me. But if you do the right thing, satisfy you, and it is right because of the acceptance of what you do. Yeah. Follow me? So I, I, maybe it's just a point on words, mm. but if I do the right thing, it means more people, you, you can't satisfy everybody. Yeah. Always try to satisfy the majority. But doing the right I thing will satisfy I you, you're not going to win. Yeah. <laughs> Do the right thing. Do the right thing. All right. How do you deal with things that scare you? I'm not. I'm not easily scared. Not easily scared. Yes. The only thing I'm afraid of is rats. Rats. I don't want to run them. I don't want a rat run near me either. <laughs> so I will. I will leave him. I say he did a little jump. I bounce so my wife. <laughs> Light. And the chair jumping from a moose moose. A small one? A small one. <laughs> running to come up your foot. Oh, he's running up your leg? Coming at you. Oh, no, I'm gone. I'm <laughs> gone. I'm gone. Yes, but um, I think these are the nuances that we have. Some people, your mother's afraid of cockroach. And lizards, deathly afraid. She hear Michelle Barley, daddy, 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 daddy. Come, daddy, daddy. And that's when she looks small and she said, Dead him, daddy, dead him, dead him, daddy, dead him. I would tell her, I would say, dead him, dead him, dead him. <laughs> but there are the things that some people, some people are afraid of being tickled, I'm not tickled. Some people are afraid of the bat foot bottom, I'm not afraid of the bottom. But, you know, I don't wanna... if you, if I want my wife not to come in the room, I said to her, you know, sir, and, and, and lizard run. And I don't see him anymore. And don't swim down. He's somewhere in <laughs> And she would say, I'm down stay. I'm down stay. Is he here? <laughs> Not in that room. So, you know. Yeah. That's the same thing with mommy. If mommy saw a lizard right here, and she turned around for the spray and come back and it's not there. Yeah. Mommy and Drew are moving out for the night. Somewhere but else. As you say that. I said to my wife, you allow me to have a problem with my sinus because she always has two and three long thin and bacon and she will spray out a whole bacon and one, one lizard. lizard. A small lizard too, does it? And the two. <laughs> but you have to learn to live with it. Uh-huh. You have to. All right, let's see. All right, we're going to do three more questions. So, one of them is, did you dye your hair? Did I dye my hair? Or, and when did your hair color start? Well, well you, you have to... That question is a double question. When did it start? Uh-huh. And did I dye it? Yes. 
when it started and I finished it. You, it started and you <laughs> finished it. Yes. Yeah, good well, answer. Well, the truth is, it would have gray around, you know, but naturally, and your mother started to grow at about 13. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it, it might start to like this, right? And I hold it like that. Yeah. But your great grandson Cole had half a blonde eyebrow since birth. Yes. We have great, we have, we have gray. My mother was totally gray. My brother who died last week, totally gray. And uh, you never know. I might live well, it's totally gray. <laughs> <laughs> Might just live on. They might see the fully gray Pernell Charles. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What is one piece of advice you would give to your younger self? My younger son. Your younger self. Yourself. You mean? Yeah. If you could give yourself one piece of advice. You know, Chad, it's a good question. I have been what people would call a social revolutionary. I wanted to see the lives of people better, even fight for it. Yeah. Um, I think if I had mobilized more of a personal, mm -hmm. things could have been different. But how, more, how much better would I want to achieve? But um, I think that I have done well for myself and for others. Um, I don't think that there's much more I could do because I had a late start. Mm -hmm. I reached the head of the line, but I was way behind. Mm -hmm. So I will just tell you, don't waste time. Mm -hmm. Every hour that passed without you doing anything, you will never, ever recover. Never get it back. That's true. Don't waste time. Read, write, practice. Take exercise, eat right. Not everybody listening will accept this. But I get back. I've never been to a bar mm -hmm. and order a drink of rum and drink it. Whiskey and drink it. Never? Not in my entire life have I put alcohol of that level into my stomach. Somebody saying it's lime <laughs> Well, listen. Have you ever gone to a bar? Several times. Have you ever bought rum for the boys? Several times. Several times. And when the bartender is coming, they carry a thing. Just a bottle of thing for you. And they will always say, Mr. Charles, I know it's thing you drink. <laughs> However, I should give you this as a final truth. When Mr. Samster became Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, I think in 1967, there about, uh -huh. came to New York. No, came to New York in 1965. 1965. I think he was deputy prime minister, and they had a reception for him. When the waiter came around, bought a nice drink of top class whiskey mm -hmm. for them and, and one for me. He said, Pearl, I don't drink those things, you know. I said, so it's not that I don't drink it. I can't drink My stomach will never accommodate alcohol at that level. I said, don't worry about it. We have something for it. And he brought back a glass just like this, full. He said, taste it. Mm. What do you have it? Nice, orange juice. Orange juice? So I consumed the whole glass. And that's one of the one. What else was it there? Vodka. <laughs> what do you call it? Vodka. Well, what is a mixture called it? 
Orange juice and vodka? Yes. Mm, I'm not sure. Then guess what I told you to Somebody me. out here knows that it Somebody is. Somebody out there tell you. So, about two hours, <laughs> I've taken the train to go home. Uh -huh. No, I have no car. Went on the train at West 4th Street, going up to 124th Street in New York. I was giving you a few notes today. Yeah. It's a lot of blocks. And I sat down. I was like, I was it's like, over. I forgot what I called the drink one. Popular drink. When I felt the man in charge of the train saying, hey, 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 <laughs> said, hey, Bob. This is where we terminate. You missed your stop? This is 129th Street and 8th Avenue. <laughs> I said, boss, why you didn't wake me up? He said, well, you don't disturb the passenger. You don't disturb, never disturb a passenger while they're sleeping. <laughs> but that's not the problem. He said, we terminate here until tomorrow. So you were stuck? Oh, you didn't have a car, so you were stuck there. He said, if you go across the street, the D train runs Every hour. Every hour. It just leave five minutes ago. So, so yeah, fifty-five minutes. <laughs> I waited alone in the station. And the train came. I refused to sit down. Yeah, standing up, because if you sit down you knock I it out again. They sit down it, it, up and you sit in the rest of Very very late, you know. <laughs> very late, I forget yeah, what nice. the name. Somebody was saying what's the name of it. Yes, I keep looking up. A little, a little, so I called the next day and said, What the hell did you give, give me, me to drink? I told him, he said, We only put a little bit of vodka. vodka. <laughs> and so, it's a popular drink, vodka and orange juice. I'll find it. Couldn't taste it. You couldn't taste it. Vodka. Couldn't taste it. It's hidden. And so, I think that's the greatest. Um, Challenge I've had with yep. alcohol, you know? but I, 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 I don't think that my stomach was built for it. My, 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 I would not accept it. It wouldn't go down. Well, it just wasn't for you. It wouldn't go down. It's like yeah. drinking hot pepper. Hot pepper. <laughs> oh, Grandpa. We've answered a lot of questions. We've been here for almost an hour now. Oh yes? Yes, so this is the end of this video. If they want to see you again, they need to send you some good, fresh questions. Well, I would expect that you want to get my books. Yes. And in I, promise, them, I promise to give away some and we never set, set it up. Yes. You need to set it in up. In order for them to Read my book and sell them at half price. All right, there you guys, 50% discount. Right? For those who are fans in your thing. Yeah. But there's a little catch to that. What's the catch? They're not more than 20. There's only 20 books? <laughs> there's only 20 books left? Well, if I open it like that, it will go. So, as a businessman, what is it? What is it? Set. What is it? You got 20. Oh, 20 for the deal. So, the first 20, 20 people. First 20 okay. people will get to you. All right. And uh, they will get them at half price. Okay. So, you will decide. All right. So, you guys DM me if you guys want one of the books. He's doing 20 of them for 50% off. DM me or email me. DM will probably be the fastest way. The first 20 to DM me saying that they want it and they're ready. I'll, I'll write you guys down and then we'll set it up before I leave. Well, let, let's, let's give you another opportunity. Another opportunity. If, if, if you're a good salesman uh -huh. and you have a lot of customers, uh -huh. you can negotiate. Can negotiate. All right, guys, so I'm going to try and negotiate with the boss here for you guys. Yeah. Once, once well, you guys start messaging me. Well, the first is 50%. 50%. You can negotiate. I can negotiate from there on. Depends on how many. Yeah, from how many. I can negotiate with them. Grandpa, thank you for coming and answering their questions. I'm sure a lot of people got insight and heard a lot of stuff that they've never heard before. Well, let me say, Chad, I expect great things of you. 
and I'm saying it publicly. So far, you have been doing well. Thank you. You have demonstrated your interest in your profession or become a professional. Let me say to you, you can never make it in this world if you are not somebody challenging all that is before you yeah. so you can survive in it. If you are just lackadaisical, sleeping, don't care, don't bed, don't watch. Yeah, that's true. And I'm going to tell all your friends tell. that they're going to like me for this. Mm -hmm. But you'll never see me with my pants below you halfway and my underpants halfway up. Yep. What is the reason why you call it underpants? Because it's supposed to be underneath your pants, ah. not to be shown. I agree. Ah. I don't wear my pants below my waist. I can't say how brilliant young men can find a pleasure in showing some of the pants that are not very clean. Why, why would I even buy my size if I'm going to wear them underneath my waist? <laughs> not only that. It doesn't make any sense. But why sense. do you put your pants so low that your knee can't move in it? Yeah, you can't even jump. It shows a, 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 a type of person that gives a, a, not a happy moment. And I don't think that some of my girls who are looking are attracted to that. They're not attracted to no. that. So put it in the brain. And as I say, I want to congratulate you. Thank you. Study hard. I will. Settle down. All of you. Challenges you will face. Meet them. Call me. Any hour of the night. If you have a problem. I love that. And one of these days you can get a, a number of young people. What I'll do. I'll try and make a Zoom call. Right. So you can have a bunch of people on there. May I just tell you a secret? We did an interview once. Uh -huh. I've had a lot of people who call me. 75% are women. Mm -hmm. Does that say anything? 75% of them are women too. 75% of who call me uh -huh. to congratulate me and you uh -huh. are women. Yeah, 75% of them are women. Oh, well, they will call me? Yeah, 75% of them are all women. I only have 25% males. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, let me say to the males, you have a challenge before you. You have to face the bull. You are the man. And you have to see to the increased population. So, yes, women, fight on, take the leadership, but men, please don't stay behind. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time. Tell a peace out. Wave bye. <laughs>